Hi, I'm Julie Hall from Women Unlimited and welcome to this week's edition of Women Unlimited TV. Today, instead of our doing our traditional interview, what are we going to do is actually show you one of the videos from one of our previous conferences, because today we're actually opening up the sales page, hooray, for the Thrive 2013 conference. So this particular speaker is a woman called Liz Warham. She is the founder of Temple Spa, and she was actually the brains behind Virgin V. So she approached Richard Branson, and together they created this phenomenal brand. Now in the video, she talks about so many amazing things which are things that we should all be applying to our business so please watch it and enjoy it and I hope we're gonna see you at the conference in March take care and enjoy the video it's great to be here and I have to say Emma your my background is just so similar so I'll sort of whiz over uh, a little bit of uh, the early parts of my career I'm just going to take a little bit of gin and tonic here uh -huh. good well, I started my personal career off at uh, quite a young age, and that is basically because um, at the age of 14, I met my husband, um, who's still my husband, 34 years later. And no, actually, I've been married 34 years, so um, I met him at a very young age, and I was one of four children, and um, I won a place at um, an all-girls grammar school, I uh, won a scholarship to uh, a private grammar school in Suffolk, um, only to then declare to my parents that I wasn't going to go because I didn't like the uniform and um, I didn't want to be picked up at seven o'clock in the morning to make the trek there. And rather strangely, they sort of agreed and said, fine. Um, I met my husband and then all my career plans just became, you know, where I was going to move in with him and what we were going to do. And I have to say the rest is history. Actually for me it's worked out really well. I'm very blessed to be married to a husband who's been my best supporter and he's made sure that my life with him is incredibly interesting and fascinating and progressive. So um, I don't feel I've missed out. But of course you have to start working somewhere. So after a couple of years as a dental nurse, um, I was fortunate enough to join a company called Jaffra Cosmetics, which was um, owned by Gillette. And it was a direct sales company and became a way for me to supplement my very poor income. You don't make a lot of money as a dental nurse. And uh, so it was suggested to me by a friend that I might be good at selling cosmetics, which I actually was. And uh, I joined the company when I was 18. And then by the time I was 20, I actually had 2,000 consultants that I had brought into the business. Um, so I was a very young entrepreneur within the business and sort of got spotted by Gillette and uh, went on to be national sales director for that company so that was a very young um, age for me to be having a job like that and uh, I hit a great success in that business and started to understand my skill for working with women I've always believed in women I don't know if that's because I had three older brothers and mine was a very male dom dominated um, family and but I did absolutely love working with women and uh, I went on from Jaffra to go and work for a cosmetic manufacturer and this was obviously previous to uh, Diva Cosmetics because it seems to me that we also used to sell to Miss Selfridge and uh, to all of the sort of high street retailers and my account was Body Shop. When I went for the interview, um, I remember going along and him saying to me, the, the guy who owned the company, um, do you know Anita Roddick? And um, actually, I'd been to uh, the lunch when Anita Roddick had been made Businesswoman of the Year, the Verklico lunch. And I was sitting about as far away from her as you on the, the back row. And uh, full of hyperbole, I said, yes, I know her really well. In fact, I was just at lunch with her last week. <laughs> and... Uh, was then given the job because he thought, well, this is what we need, someone who's got contacts. <laughs> and um, on my first day, I was given my targets, and I'll never forget to this day, my target was £5 million turnover, and that was in the middle 80s, and, um, which didn't sort of floor me too much until I discovered that £2 million of it was for Body Shop. So I said, so what did they do last year? And he said, well, they didn't do anything last year. This is a new account that we've brought you in to go and get because of your contacts. And um, I soon realized that um, I, I learned to exaggerate at a very young age. And sometimes it helps you and other times it can get you in a lot of trouble. Um, needless to say, I did go and get that business and I won it. And uh, we did indeed do our two, two million pounds sales in that first year. 
Um, and it got me to uh, become very good friends with Anita Roddick. And um, as time would go on, she said to me one day, what are you working for that funny little company in Suffolk for? Why don't you come and work for me? And uh, so I did. And then I went on to manage the Colourings brand, which was the cosmetic brand within the body shop. And uh, after a couple of years, um, my husband joined the business and we together as general managers took the business from about uh, three million pounds turnover to 124 million in four years. So that was a very successful time in our lives as well. And I learned a lot about how to take a British brand and to market in 42 countries um, around the world. And so it broadened my horizons a lot. And um, we went, then went on from body shop to create a brand called V which is French for life, and we decided there was a, a potential for a grown-up uh, body shop for slightly older women that were leaving the body shop and were looking for a top-to-toe solution um, when they reached their sort of mid to late 20s and 30s and onwards. And um, we were out to supper with some friends um, who kept saying to us, come on you two, when are you going to launch this V brand? And, uh, you know, you get very used, some of you have moved from, you know, well-paid jobs with all the trappings and security. And it becomes a very big thing to think, actually, when it comes down to it, have I really got the nerve to go off and, and do our own thing? And uh, so we said, well, we're wondering if maybe the name V isn't, it's a bit too niche and Liz and Mark Cosmetics doesn't have that ring about it. And uh, so I don't know whether I'd had a couple of glasses too many, but when they said, well, all right, then well, what would you do? I said, well, I think we probably need to find a kind of power brand. Remember, this was the mid 80s. So it was all about, I'm sorry, the mid 90s. So it was all about power brands. You know, your kids had to have Nike trainers, otherwise they weren't quite the deal. Um, and people were very aware of brand names. And so we decided that we probably ought to have a power brand. So they said, well, who would you go to? So I said, well, you know, someone like Richard Branson. And the whole, pe the whole room just laughed and said, yeah, right, as if. Well, it is that rebellion in me and being the youngest of four boys, or three boys, that I think was, if I was ever told you can't do something, that is the best thing you could possibly do for me. Because it's, you know, if I see a sign and it says, don't walk on the grass, I'm like, well, I'll run then. <laughs> so um, I think someone saying to me, you won't get hold of Richard Branson was enough for me to say, well, I'll just show you that I will get hold of Richard Branson, which I did. And uh, within a fortnight, we were actually in his home in um, Holland Park and presented our idea to him. He loved it and said, V, Virgin V. Um, and so it became Virgin V. Uh, so I was the person that took the idea to him. And then we developed the business and we launched it in 18 months. Uh, we did 10 million pound sales in our first year. It was just phenomenal, phenomenal success. And it nearly killed me. <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, but you do learn some things about yourself and your likes and dislikes. And actually, sometimes, you know, I have a saying. Well, I don't have a saying. A friend of mine who uh, did this as a sermon has a saying, and it's really magical. And it says, without an enemy, your present becomes permanent. So in other words, unless something negative happens in your life or in a situation, you very often stay in that situation forever. I have a brother who's lived in the same town in Suffolk all his life and, and worked for the same company, and he retires in two years. And, and to me, much as I love him, his life is like a, the size of a postage stamp because he really hasn't known anything different. Um, and so I found that working with the suits, working in the city and raising money and, and all of that just didn't suit me. I hadn't got a business degree and I didn't speak the language and I'm a people and product person. And uh, so one day we phoned up Richard, as you do, and said, we want out. We actually don't want to be doing this anymore. I'd actually lost three parents in the same year, my husband's mother and my mother and father. And, and out of tragedy, you are forced to stop and look at your life and think, well, you know, what matters to me? The worst thing that's ever going to happen to me has happened to me now. So let me just face what I fear. And uh, actually, to start again and do it for me is not a fear anymore. It's something I really, really want to do. So Virgin for us and Body Shop uh, was a fantastic testing ground and training ground for when we were going to have our own uh, baby of our own. And so 10 years ago in February, uh, Mark and I left um, the lush life of high salaries and all that goes with it and sat, we have a cottage in our garden, and uh, we said, how about turning that into an office? And we sat opposite each other, and I'll never forget the phone rang because we just connected the phones. And I answered the phone and said, um, 
um, <laughs> thinking, I don't know what I'm going to call my company. I haven't got a business card, therefore I am nothing, because you only exist with what's on your title. And it was quite sobering to suddenly think, here we go again, I've got to start something all over again. Um, but actually, he had bought me, Mark had bought me a great big Harrods um, artist pad. And I started to scribble ideas down, and within probably 10 minutes, we'd named the brand, we'd named our ranges, we had constructed what was for me like falling off a log, and the rest is history. It was just a little bit strange, though, because we left Virgin with 190 staff, and then we started Temple Spa with actually just a two of us, and we used to play games with each other because the phone would ring and we'd go, what should we be today? And I'd go, marketing, <laughs> or <laughs> design. <laughs> Finance, what do you want me to be today? And so I, I learned a lot of skills. And because actually we did everything, absolutely everything. It used to be really funny because you'd, you'd pack off something in a jiffy bag to send to someone and then you'd put it in the post tray and think, well, why put it in the post tray? Because I'm going to be taking it. So <laughs> why have a post tray? And uh, so we learned to do everything. And to this day, I can honestly say that even though, thank God, our company is now a multi million pound business and we trade in nine countries and it's doing extremely extremely well, I've got my finger on the pulse, as my team on the front row will tell you. Um, so I think it was a good uh, training ground. Um, now I'd love to give you a really nice, cosy, you know, well thought out strategy that said, we planned to launch in Harrods, and we did launch in, let me tell you, we planned to do nothing. Um, <laughs> we, we did have a business plan, but as a lot of business plans, they're kind of defunct. The minute that you've written, they're, they're kind of retro. We had a sense of where we wanted to go. We felt very strong that we wanted to have a brand of products that we really believed in that were highly integrous and that would bear the hallmarks as if, if, if you're going to have a child uh, then hopefully you and your partner can look at your child and say well he's a bit like me there or she's cantankerous like me there so for us we'd created all these brands for other people so we felt that now we've got time to uh, create our own brand then it would be really important for it to bear the hallmarks of us uh, so it would have to be very, very good quality, our best work, really. Um, my husband's an, an engineer and he loves design, so he wanted aesthetically for it to look really pleasing. Um, and so we, we started our work on Temple Spa, and after three years um, of literally just working away at it, and that's not because we're slow, it's just because we wanted to perfect it and get it really right for launch. Um, we did indeed launch in Harrods and Selfridges, and in our first spa, which was on the south coast of England, near where we live, in a, a beautiful hotel called Bailiff's Court Hotel. And that was our launch pad um, for Temple Spa. But I'm just gonna tell you a side here. Um, Prior to launching, we had made a very definite decision that we did not want any partners. Didn't want to be owned by anybody, didn't want any shareholders. We wanted it to be 100% ours. And that's quite ambitious because if you haven't got multi, multi millions, I mean, we started Virgin V, and it's this is public information, with £20 million. We were starting Temple Spa with 1% with of that. And everybody kept saying, oh, you'll need to win the premium bonds, you'll need to get a shareholder, you'll need to get a VC. VC to me stands for vulture capitalists, not um, venture capitalists. And I'm sorry for any of you who have them as your partners. If that works for you, good on you. But I just knew it wouldn't work for me. And I didn't want some sort of 20-year-old MBA coming telling me who'd done nothing in life, absolutely nothing. Um, I have a, a, a saying that consultants are very often people who ask for your watch and then they tell you the time with your watch. <laughs> And um, I didn't want that. So we, we went to our bank, actually. We've still kept our bank in, in Suffolk. And I remember walking in, and we have a f female bank manager who I loved at the time. And uh, she said, so, I've been dying to talk to you two. So what's the dirt on Richard Branson? And I was absolutely disheartened, because I just thought, you know what? You're here to talk to us about us and about Temple Spa. I don't really give a stuff about Virgin. And um, I've got a, you know, they've, they've put a gagging clause on me for life anyway, so I really can't say anything. So let's move on and talk about Temple Spa. And she said, well, I'm really, really sorry, but we're not going to be able to support you. And all we were asking for was an overdraft. And she said, we're not going to be able to support you. And, and uh, so I picked my bag up. And as I walked out, I said, wouldn't it be sad, Lorraine, if you were the next person who was the person who had not given Anita Roddick the money you know, we all know the story about the guy who said no, he wasn't going to give her the money, and the rest is history. And I'll leave you with that thought, Lorraine. <laughs> and she's now, as so, um, Alex will tell you, one of our best customers. She still buys mail order from Lowestoft, where she's now the, the, the manager. So, um, our... <laughs> says it all. 
so that was our start. Uh, so we've just um, uh, celebrated our first, uh, well, our 10 year anniversary. That was when we started the business. And uh, I'm thankful to say that our business is actually up 100% year on year and uh, we are doing phenomenally well and I have to stop and ask myself the question why because that seems like an amazing blessing to be in the situation where in this so-called recession so many people are not and uh, what we just saw in some of those stats there um, the recession hasn't been very kind but I think probably um, a couple of years ago when people started to talk about the recession it didn't matter what paper you read you'd be driving along the road and it was like every time the news would come on it would be just another nail in the coffin to talk about the recession and I remember driving along one day and I was full of the joys of spring until I heard the news and I was like shut up and I'm just going to turn you off and I am not going to receive this information because what good is it what good is it to just keep repeating yet another version of how bad this recession is and I think for us um, we realized in Temple Spa that recession is a word that um, it, it exposes it exposes the good and it exposes the bad and one thing it does expose is weakness or mediocrity in an organization and the antithesis of that is it exposes excellence and one word which is recession proof is excellence and if I could just give you one bit of advice I would say look at you look at your organization look at your own business whatever you come representing today and do a little bit of a health check and say are we excellent because excellence is recession proof the one thing about recession usually means that people start to uh, look at their bank balance or what's in their wallet or what's not in their wallet uh, or they'll do their prognosis for where we might be in six months and the one thing it does is it focuses the mind on choice and all of a sudden you do have choice where you eat where you shop what you do and if you have a choice between this organization and that organization and they're mediocre and they're excellent it's a no-brainer you're going to go where there's excellent so we uh, very much gave a message to our team and to ourselves in temple spy and said come on buckle up you know this is not going to be an easy ride but we're not going to talk about recession it's not like la 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 but it was very much we're going to we're going to really focus on what we can do to be outstanding and uh, it really does polarize the men from the boys and uh, we decided to kick the word out of our lexicon and just to use it as an opportunity to shine um so how do we do that well i think it starts with making a personal stand for excellence I don't find excellence difficult. I'm very fortunate. I've worked for, for some bosses who've been absolute pigs. And actually, the best thing they could have done for me is they've caused me to be disciplined. A lot of the words that Emma used earlier, I completely concur with. I'm a very disciplined person. And excellence matters to me enormously. Um, and uh, so what do we do? Well, here are some just random things that I could explain to you. Um, we um, tightened up our belts where we felt that it wouldn't be noticed, but we also loosened our belts where we felt it would be noticed. And uh, we actually put a challenge out to our team. Um, just to explain a little bit about Temple Spa, we, do, um, we are in retail, which is Harrods and Selfridges, and that's a good window on the world for us. Uh, we obviously have our own website, templespa.com. Um, we, we do a very big business in the corporate arena. Um, for example, we are on M it's first class we've we had the American Airlines first and business class business for five years for the amenity kits which sounds like so what four items well when you're selling a million and a half of each of them that starts to be your bank so we didn't need Lorraine because we had American Airlines and Scandinavian Airlines and, and a lot of those corporate pieces of business which was great um, but the real passion for me the love of my heart is our, what we affectionately call our spa to go business and I realized one day when I was sitting on an American Airlines plane in first class because they'd upgraded me and I was watching a guy open up his amenity kit and he pulled out our Temple Spa products and he sort of went like that and put them back and I felt like that took a lot of sweat and blood and tears <laughs> you should like it you should go oh that's amazing and I suddenly realized I'd actually got no real relationship with my consumers at all didn't know who they were and I couldn't really relate to them and I thought we've got to get up and close and personal and I have a personal conviction that for a lot of women the purchasing of cosmetics is even more enjoyable than the using of and we felt if we could create a wonderful environment and a way in which a group of women could maybe relax have a glass of wine try some products and almost emulate
say, a trip to the spa. I mean, we have beautiful spas. We've just launched our first branded temple spa in the Cotswolds, and it's divine, and it's wonderful. But let's face it, that's not how most of us do our daily living. So we wanted to bring the spa to you, so we created our Spa to Go program. Uh, which meant that we were looking for female entrepreneurs, women who wanted to have their own business and become like mini franchisees, buy a go-do business plan, not have to do maybe the, th the three-year trek that we just heard about, but just get a bit of a quick start and say, we will give you a business plan um, and we will let you take a Temple Spa franchise and um, open up those products into your world and sphere of influence. And we now have over 500 um, of these women across the country and it is wonderful. And the thing we love more than anything is watching them grow and develop. And uh, that has been just amazing. And it, and it really is passion for me. And we gave them a challenge uh, at the back end of last year and said, we're not going to put a limit on it. But any of you who are able to go out and do £20,000 sales between now and the end of January. And that's quite... That's personally, that's not your team, that's you personally. And our finance director um, put, I think, a budget away for nine people to qualify. Well, um, in three weeks' time, we're actually taking 18 people to an all-expenses-paid trip to New York, and we're doing it in absolute style. And they're already driving me crazy, talking about what they're going to wear and... <laughs> Everything, but that was kind of moving in an opposite spirit, just when you could be tightening your belt and thinking, no, 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 we thought, no, we're going to liberate these girls and we're going to give them some real, really something to aim for, and a real treat to say to their, their kids, their husband, their partner, my company's taking me on an all-expenses-paid trip to New York, and it, and it really um, paid off. We phoned up at, at the classes that we do every night of the week. We suddenly randomly would call up a hostess about half past ten at night and say, have you had a good evening? Well, thank you you so much for bringing Temple Spa into your home. I'm just phoning up to tell you that your entire class is free. Absolutely everybody at your class is going to get their products for nothing. And we do just random things like that. Um, we decided that when people got their parcels, that we would start putting in chocolates and little messages and, and just make them look really beautiful so that when they get their delivery, it's like buying all over again. And that, that would be something that would be a cost, but there would be, it would bring an element of joy um, into the business. And uh, I, I think one of the most important things that we don't do is assume that people won't pay um, for our product. They will if it's good. You know, you and your product are one. Your product is one thing, but you are that product as well. And I think if people love you and you're attractive and people would want to buy from you, um, then don't assume that people won't afford it. Um, I had a friend who had a service station. He lived in a, a very... Uh, village in the middle of nowhere and a mate of his had the petrol station and when we had the recession and the price of petrol went up he said I don't know I think he's going to go under and I said well I think that's completely the wrong attitude he shouldn't go under he should say what more can we do to enhance our service so people come to us and they don't go 10 miles down the road to go to the BP garage and um, I helped him come up with the idea of the all-female lane. And the idea was that as you drove into the service station, if you drove to the right, and, it, and he painted his um, tank pink and everything, and you went into the right-hand lane, and as you sat there, you didn't have to leave your car. They would serve you, and they'd clean your windscreen, and they'd check your oil, and they'd give you a cup of coffee or tea while you sat there. You gave them your card, and you just sat there just while they did the whole thing. And it became such a big hit, the local newspaper wrote about it and people were queuing up to go in the all-female lane. <laughs> so you have to turn lemons into lemonade. You cannot look at situations and say, this is going to destroy me. Another thing we do very carefully in Temple Spa is we watch our words. I think so many, so many times I, I say to people, how are things? Oh, touch wood. Oh, if wood is all that you've got to rely on, then you're a sad person. <laughs> you know, um, I think that we just say these things. We say, oh, it's going all right at the moment, but got to be careful. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. I just think, be positive. If people start sneezing around me and you get people going, oh, I'm going to get a cold, well, you will if you want. You know, it's the law of attraction. If you say you're going to get a cold, you will get a cold. But I'm going the complete opposite. I just drive people crazy. I go, no, nope, not going to affect me. And I do think it becomes a sort of law of, um, of attraction. Um, mediocrity. I have such an aversion to mediocrity that I try and look at everything in my life and everything in my business to see what is mediocre because mediocrity is everywhere and it's catching. Excellence is somewhat more special 
and it's something that you've really got to desire and you've really got to work hard for. Uh, but mediocrity, I mean, if you take some of the you know, iconic names that were here a year ago and aren't here now, Woolworths. Who would ever have thought that Woolworths would go? But I knew Woolworths was in trouble when I went to buy a DVD that at the time in all the usual um, supermarkets was 9 99 and in Woolworths it was 15 99 And I felt like saying to them, you are unhinged. There used to be a time when you went to Woolworths for a bargain. That was where you went to get your simple, uncomplicated, you know, goods. And when they were the most expensive place, um, you take places like MFI. You know, I've got MFI furniture all over Temple Spa. I can't get it anymore. And I said to someone yesterday, where do you get MFI furniture? She said, you can't. It's completely gone. Why? Mediocrity. Now, I do apologise if someone's here from Woolworth or MFI, but maybe you would also agree that, you know, if, if you make excellence your goal it's a good goal to have it really is i was driving on the the motorway the other day and uh, i do drive a range rover so therefore you just look for other range rovers and this peugeot estate that was really really old was driving up the motorway in in the sort of left hand lane just really trying to get there and on the back he'd replaced his peugeot sign with range rover <laughs> I admired his cheek, but I did think to myself, not a Range Rover, doesn't look like a Range Rover. Dream on, that is not a Range Rover. Um, and I think sometimes you, it's so important to look at you and what you do and think, do I live up to my name? Do I deliver against what's actually on my brochure? You know, my, you, your brochure might be fantastic. Maybe you didn't do your brochure. Maybe someone else did it. It's a bit like teachers can always tell when parents have done homework because it doesn't actually resemble what the, the student is, is capable of. Um, but I think it's really important to make sure that you sound attractive, um, that what you do sounds attractive, not just sounds attractive, but is attractive. Um, you know, so many people, I talk to a lot of people, and at events like this, people will come and give me their business card, and I'll say to them, so what do you do? And 10 minutes later, I still don't know what they do. And I'm not a thick person, I think I'm pretty bright, and I can't tell. So if you can't explain what you do in about a minute, because you do know, don't you, that most people don't really care about you, they just care about themselves, and they want to talk about themselves. <laughs> They don't really care what you do at all. And we've even in our own Temple Spa classes had to teach our girls that it's like a triangle. You do a tiny little bit at the beginning about you, because basically people are there looking you up and down, wondering where you got your suit from, how much you weigh, and <laughs> they really don't care a, a, a bit about you. They want to talk about themselves. So we just made sure that our, our star is very tiny and short and to the point, so we can get to talk about what most people want to talk about, which is me. And uh, I think in business, um, I am very fortunate that I had an aunt, um, and she, she's still alive, and she's very wonderful, and she taught me at a young age, and she said, Liz, do you know what? Be generous with other people. Encourage other people. One of the greatest things that you can do in life is be an encourager. And um, I think that this helps business, I think it helps relationships, and every other strata. When you can actually be more interested in the person you're talking to than about yourself, and it takes a lot of pressure off because you don't have to think too much about what you're going to say. You show an interest in other people. And I found that's, that's generally what connects me. And to me, it's, um, it's really um, one of those excellence things. As I say, I think that it's good to do a quality control check on you and your business and look at your statements. Um, I was standing in a queue in Miami for two hours in January waiting to get my hire car, which I had paid for in advance and the queue was getting bigger and bigger and by the time I got to uh, collect my car that I'd ordered they said that car isn't available you're going to have to have this car and I said has it got never lost no it hasn't got never lost well look here's my reservation and it I booked this six months ago and as I'm looking over her shoulder I'm seeing the sign Avis we try harder and I'm thinking well how much harder you're going to have to try I mean I dread to think what you're like if you're not trying hard and, um, and so I think it's really important to weigh up what you say and what you do and be realistic about what you do and what relationship it has to with what you earn. Because we're not paid, we're paid in accordance to what we do, not what we think. 
and there's a heck of a lot of thinking that can be done. And I know a lot of the girls in our business, they get really busy. They get really busy organizing themselves and doing all sorts of events. And, and then I say to them, but what do you do? That you've told me now how you organize your office, and that's fantastic. You told me the calls that you've made, but where's the closure? And so remember that we're paid in direct proportion to uh, what we do, not what we think. And thinking's lovely, isn't it? Let's face it, don't you love to think? I went for a walk yesterday and for an hour and a half on the beach and it just was so interesting for me to think where my mind went and I meandered and it was just, I went all over the world and to my family and everything. Thinking is wonderful, but if it doesn't put the money in the bank that pays the, the wages or pay your mortgage, then you have to think very, very carefully. Um, another thing is to just ensure that you've got charm in your business. Do, do a health check. Do you sound charming? Do your people sound charming? Um, I find that um, very often, I was talking to a guy once, I was, uh, I was introduced to a chap at a networking thing and someone said to me, oh, he's, he does packaging, he would really be good for you to talk to. I think he might be able to do something for Temple Spa. So I thought, well, one good turn deserves another, so I'll phone him up. And, um, well, actually I didn't, my husband phoned him up and, uh, and he said, um, John, John, it's, it's Mark from Temple Spa. Who? Who did you say? He said, it's Mark from Mark Warren from Temple Spa. We met you at a networking. Oh, hi, yes. Hello, Mark. Yes. Uh, I can't talk to you at the moment because I'm just walking the dog. So anyway, that was fine. We called again. This is no word of a lie. This is absolutely the truth. We called the next time and he answered and he said, um, John, can't remember his surname. And he said, I can't talk to you at the moment, Mark. He says, I'm on the toilet. <laughs> That is the absolute truth. So when someone said to me, I don't think John's business is doing very well, poor bloke, I think he's going to have to go bankrupt. And I thought, well, sorry, you can't even answer the phone properly. And I was at a networking event and a lady told me about her company and, uh, and she said, would I like to contact her to see if she could do some work for us? And uh, she gave me a really fancy name for her company, but then when she gave me her email address, it was so-and-so-and-so-and-so -and -so -and -so at Tesco Direct. <laughs> and I'm thinking, mm, you've just got to be seamless in that pursuit of excellence and look at everything and just think, you know, are we charming? Do we sound fabulous? Um, do I let my kids answer the phone? You know, and, and they go, Mom, I don't know who it is. You know, does that sound professional? Probably not. And as cruel as it is, you have to look at every single detail. I don't know whoever it was who came up with the term, the devil is in the detail, as though it's a bad thing. God's in the detail. It's a good thing. You know, detail is what makes the difference. And so, you know, hang the idea. Probably the devil himself came up with that term because really to think that detail is a bad thing. Detail is a good thing and it's something that we really should uh, pursue. Alex and I did an interview with someone the other day and um, she came in for a uh, supposedly executive position wearing a cardigan that was just too tight to sit and I'm not one to talk but you know I know how to dress to cover up the, the wobbly bits and the wobbly bits were squealing for attention in the middle of this interview and, um, and, and this so commonly happens I interview a lot of people and I will see people because I've been in the position where I've needed someone to do me a turn so I'll always see people and even if it's only for half an hour I'll sit and listen to them but so many times I want, to, I want to say to that person, honey, do yourself a favour. Don't tell me about how bad the boss was. Don't tell me how you left. I want to know what you did when you were in the job, not what made you leave and how negative all of that was. And, uh, and you know, I find so often that people aren't doing themselves any favour. And so I come back to excellence, wear it like pearls around your neck. And, uh, and I think you'll find that it will make a big difference. Um, I'm going to just wrap up here now. I think you have to examine and understand why you do what you do. And I love that term, and I'm going to do it in my business. Be a customer again and do that journey and see. I regularly go on our website and I think, well, is it easy? You know, is it user-friendly? And it's only then that you suddenly think, why have we still got the Christmas promotion on page 15? Um, you know, and it's not until you look at yourself that you even see what you look like to the outside world. And just examine what you do and just say, 
are we doing this because we've always done it? Is there a good reason to do this? Is this thing, this policy, the way we do things, is it making us stand out from the crowd? Um, I have a nephew who worked for a building society. He's moved on now, but he was working for a very, well, the country's top building society. And um, he had to go to uh, a, an interview with the, the, big bo the big cheese and say he'd come up with three ideas. This was at the beginning of the recession. Three things he was going to do within his London. He looked after three offices in London to stand out from the crowd. Because where he was, one of them was in King's Road. You'd got one building society there, then his company, then one next door. So what was going to make the difference? And we chatted together and I gave him some ideas. And so he went into the meeting to his boss and he just said, we're going to light candles. We're going to light candles because when people come in here, they're a bit stressed because they're asking about money. They're wanting to know if they can have some more money, um, sometimes put some money in, but it's a very financial situation. So we're going to change the environment. And all of a sudden, they started playing classical music. And then they changed it to jazz late afternoon. They burnt candles. They spritzed the atmosphere. And then they took some of their drinks budget and found out a, a way around an alcohol license and started serving wine from 5 o'clock in the evening <laughs> at a building society. But it did make him stand out. Um, a guy went into a Baskin Robbins um, ice cream parlour and, um, and he just became like a little kid the minute that he walked in. It wasn't anybody in the ice cream parlour, but he just said, oh, I love this, I love this. Oh, uh, now what am I going to have? Oh, I will have uh, uh, one Rocky Road, uh, one uh, chocolate pecan and I will have one strawberry cheesecake. And the woman behind the, the, the counter said, did you take a ticket? <laughs> And he hadn't taken one of these. And he said, but there's nobody in the store. Sir, please take a ticket. <laughs> and I think, you know, sometimes without us even realising that we can get a little bit like that. We do what we do because it's what we've always been told to do. It's inherited rules or whatever. And I strongly encourage you to shake out your business and to very frequently, well, ours is not a very old business, but we do it all the time and we just reinvent ourselves. And, you know, Madonna, whether you love her or hate her, bless her, she has reinvented herself. She does not look like she did uh, five years ago. That was five years ago, so only you can decide whether I look like that or not. <laughs> Probably not. Actually, we do have that photograph at some of our classes and when the girls stand up and they talk about Liz and Mark and they start a temple spa and everything and it was a very funny story. One of the girls was doing a class and all of a sudden one of the guests at the class, she went, hold on a moment, I know her, she was in Greece earlier on this year. <laughs> I hope I had all my appropriate clothes on at the time. So, um, finally, I just want to say, you know, you've come here today because you've got a dream, you've got a plan. Uh, dream bigger, because there's always bigger things down the road. And if anybody had told me 10 years ago that I'd be here today with a multi-million pound business that's trading globally with 500 gorgeous franchisees, that we're making a big difference in their lives and giving them a business opportunity. And um, am I living my dream? I am living beyond my dream. And that's because I was courageous enough when I had nothing, and when our income went down to virtually nothing, so much so we couldn't have even paid the mortgage um, if something hadn't have come through. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And that's really, really true. And I have hung on to that, and I've made sure that any little, if any, any day my hope is deferred, I don't let that moment linger beyond just a few seconds and I think no I'm living my dream I know I was put on this planet to work with women um, and I'm absolutely loving that so I would just say to you just you know dream big I would rather believe for a lot and get half than I would believe for a little and get it all so carry on dreaming thank you